I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, here we have another power supply that I'm trying to troubleshoot. This is actually here in the lab. And um, it's a Bestec ATX312Z power supply pulled out of an HP system. I've had this thing for years. Probably got it in 2014 if I were to guess. Um, I may have a video featuring the system in which I pulled this from. If I do, I'll link it up in the upper right corner. Um, this unit has an issue to where it has no 5 volt standby. Um, you can plug in power to it and the 5 volt standby does not start. Um, so the whole thing doesn't work. And the unit itself, I mean, looks fine. I'm, I've had the cover off of it at least a couple of times just to look. Um, it's nothing to do with the primary side because when you plug in power, which it ain't actually plugged in up there right now, but I'm getting ready to plug it in. But, um, when you plug in power to this thing, um, the primary caps do charge up because uh, sometimes you will see a brief flicker in the overhead lights because of the current that those caps draw through the NTC that's inside here. Um, so the primary caps do charge up, so yeah, the primary side has power. Um, 5 volt standby, however, does not have power. This unit does have um, a uh, IC controlled 5 volt standby circuit. Um, I'm not opening this up right now because I literally just had it plugged in a few minutes ago. Let's see if I can get you a look in there. Again, I don't have my regular camera, so not sure how well this will work. And maybe you'll see it right down there. That I think may be the 5 volt standby. Actually, no. Could be wrong. It's hard to see through this vent. So right there is the uh, auxiliary transformer for our final standby. Right in there, you can see, maybe you'll see there is an eight pin dip package, um, which handles the five volt standby. It offers the protections and all that good stuff. I mean, who knows, there could be a chance that that IC is bad, I don't know. Um, so, for example, what I'll try doing right now is before I plug this into power, I can do a uh, brief test with this power supply. I gotta set the 5 volts right now. Um, I'll use the chassis as ground. That's, that, that is actually, um, you can use the chassis as a ground source or a return source. It ain't actually plugged in the ground right now, but uh, if I tap this lead over here to the purple wire to back feed the 5 volt standby rail you can see the little light comes on um, which would normally be illuminated when the unit is in the standby and you can see it discharges out right there because the cap discharged and what's crazy is if you listen carefully I'm going to set the phone on top of here just have a listen let this discharge Hear that little tick sound? So yeah, I'm going to uh, also check the uh, other rails. I'm going to check the 3.3 volt rails. I'm going to turn this down to, yeah, 3.3 would be fine. Um, I'll back feed the orange wire, which is plus 3.3. It was crazy, every time that you do this, you actually hear a little tick sound. I'm not sure why that is. So I'll test the 5 volt rail. The last time I did something similar to this, I just did three, uh, I did uh, just three volts for everything. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just checking for any short circuits. And you can see, we don't have a short, we um, have 5 volts going in and it's pulling about 230 milliamps reason why that is is because there are dummy load resistors on all of the outputs uh, switch mode power supplies have these dummy load resistors to provide some load in case you do power up the unit without any load attached because a switch mode supply does need 
um, some load there in order to start and of course keep in mind that with these tests you got to make sure that your leads are hooked up properly you don't want to back feed power because you could actually pop the capacitors that way and also you want to make sure that you follow you don't exceed the voltage of the given rail because uh, again you could pop capacitors if you ain't careful I'm gonna try 12 on the 12 volt let's see what happens the fan might actually spin while I do this You can see pulling about 10 milliamps there, and the fan is running. It's actually um, running at its um, lowest speed. It does have speed control, so it's actually back feed. So back feeding the 12 volt rail in this unit is actually powering up the fan circuit, which includes the uh, temperature control and all that good stuff. So. Um, again, the whole thing is just pulling about 10 milliamps. That's the dummy load resistor as well as the uh, fan running. All right, so let me turn this back down to five volts. I'm sorry, I know this ain't the best quality video. Although I say my phone does take pretty decent video compared to the camera I have at home, I'm I'm definitely have been floating the possibility of replacing my camera with something different. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what happens um, when you plug this in to power. I'm gonna turn this back down to actual just five. 5.3 would have been kind of pushing it, but but hey. Uh, so, um, actually, before I give it power, I'm going to back feed the 5 volt standby rail again. Hopefully, that'll stay put. You can see the little light is on. Now, if I connect um, PS on, which is the green wire to ground which is the uh, which will latch the uh, circuit to turn on the unit you can see the light goes out which would indicate that the unit is trying to start but there's no power being applied to it so it's not actually starting um, so I'll go ahead and actually uh, plug this in to power so the light is on again because we are back feeding the 5 volt standby rail. I'll take this off. You see it goes out. And I can tell you that the primary side is charged up. Um, of course, I can't really show it here, but um, like at home when I plug this thing in, um, like any power supply I plug in, in, in the, of course, the computer room, um, the brief uh, surge of current that goes in to charge up the primary caps will cause the lights to uh, flicker a little bit. And of course, sometimes you can actually hear, you can hear the typical arcing sound when you plug this in. So, let's back feed the uh, 5 volt standby rail again. Making sure voltage is right. Okay, so we're back feeding 5 volt standby. And if we connect this to ground, it does the same thing. It the LED goes out, but the unit does not start. But I don't think that's the I don't think that means the power supply is bad. I think what it is um, is the actual, of course, auxiliary supply in this thing that provides power standby. Also provides a different rail to power like the PWM uh, chips. You know the. Supervisor and PWM controllers, I think those run off a different voltage or a different rail that's supplied, I think, by the second transformer, the little one in there, um, which again is controlled by that IC that runs the 5 volt standby. I think if that was working and supplying power, this unit would start. And I should mention, uh, 
inside this unit there's no visual there's no visual there's no visual issues with it um, all the capacitors look fine no burn marks nothing like that so it's really a mystery why this one is not working and i've got a delta power supply at home that's doing the exact same thing and i think it too has an ic control power with standby rail so yeah that's kind of kind of interesting so again um, I'll disconnect power from the 5 volt standby rail you can see it goes out it does not um, provide any power and the uh, voltage selection switch is indeed in the right spot we are 120 volts in this in this location so that's not the problem the primary is getting power it's just it seems like the 5 volt standby the auxiliary uh, rail in this unit is not running so therefore the rest of the unit will not start but anyways hope y'all enjoyed this quick little video and like i say i'm kind of interested to know what could be the problem because like i said inside the caps look all fine um so yeah feel free to comment hope y'all enjoyed this video thanks for watching Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to keep your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.